Victims and Villains, a channel where we talk about mental health through pop culture. I'm Captain Nostalgia. I happen to also be the director of our film festival, Horrific Hope, the first of its kind to be horror-centric and mental health focused. And we are in the process of introducing you guys to our awesome uh, winners for this year's screener and competition, both the features and the shorts. And I'm joined by stand-up comedian and writer, uh, of our third place short film winner, Sneakerhead, Mr. Jamie Campbell. How are you doing, sir? I, I'm, I'm great. I'm psyched to be here um, uh, or to be at home. I guess I'm where we're doing this from afar. <laughs> um, uh, but I'm, I'm psyched to be uh, on the show and I'm, I'm so glad that you guys like the script. People seem to really be resonating uh, with this weird story of a, an adult with a monster under their bed. It's so strange. And one of the things that I love where we are as a audience in modern horror is this ability to have comedians tell these like really weird eccentric stories and so like my first question is like being a somebody of a comedian by by trade uh where does a story like sneakerhead come from yeah i, I think sometimes it just comes out from a what if well you have an idea of like what if this was true and then heighten and explore. So just the idea of like, what if a kid had a monster under their bed? Well, what if that kid grew up? You know, the, there have to be adults with monsters under the bed if the monster doesn't get them. Um, and so it was just that idea. Uh, and, and it started out just really simply with me. I, I wanted it to feel like, almost like a romantic comedy up top where you just feel like uh, people are just being there for each other. And, and I wanted it to surprise the audience. Um, I want them to to like the the character that is the victim, but I also really want them to like our main character, who is sort of uh, the person that's feeding this guy to a monster. Uh, yeah, you kind of you kind of mentioned it, but like the gist of this is it kind of does have that rom com. So like when you have those elements of like the horror and like the creature feature, because it feels like a uh, feels very much like a like a rom com that you find. 80s or the 90s but then it has a little bit of that like universal like 30s and 40s kind of creature feature uh tossed into it as well so you have this like really awesome blend of entertainment uh can you kind of talk about some of the influences when you're like writing uh a story like this yeah i, I tend to like to write stories that take place like uh, within my own world. So there's a lot of pop culture from the late 90s. I graduated high school in 1998. So you know, I'm a, a writer in, in my early 40s. So a lot of times I'm going to reference things that I know um, or that I kind of remember. Because for me, the specifics are really fun in the way that we paint a world. Things like, uh, you know, her mentioning her having a, a yearbook photo with her hair uh, that was crimped because the crimper was a huge thing back in the day. Um, yeah, well, uh, and just, just the idea of her being a clay mate and making fun of that, um, because that was a big thing when Clay Aiken won American, or I guess he took second place in American Idol, uh, Clay Aiken's fans were known as clay mates and just those silly things that can alleviate some of the tension for us and make us care about a character because we relate to them in some way, simply just because we remember them from our own lives. Even if you weren't a claymate, you knew somebody that was into that and probably made fun sure. of them. Uh, no, I don't or, want to... Go ahead. Oh, or they made fun of you. Uh, e either way, <laughs> I want that to be something that uh, that we can connect to in some way. Now, I don't want to like ruin like the the twist ending of this and and kind of like how like one genre connects to the other. Uh, but I'm curious, like from someone that has read the script uh where did the idea of like the sneaker element kind of come in for you yeah for me i wanted there to be something that that clued uh this person in uh to like something is off in this room and i thought the idea of a dad too i, I think i initially um and and this may be a slight spoiler but i'm okay with it um i, I wanted uh, there to be that moment where we don't think that there is a monster under the bed, but we think the dad is placating this child who was told their dad that there's a monster under the bed. And so the dad has to come up with something creative 
to get the child to calm down. And so he presents this pair of shoes and says, well, honey, I fed the monster. As a matter of fact, these are the shoes that belong to the fellow who I fed to the monster. But now that the monster is eaten, you can sleep safe tonight because it's not hungry anymore. And so if a dad's making that up, that might be a thing that they do to try to fool a child. But then when we discover that, oh, the dad wasn't fooling the child, those were the sneakers that were fed to the monster or of the sneakers that belonged to the person that was fed to the monster, then as soon as we kind of realize that, that's the moment that the lights go out and it's too late for this guy. I, I, I'm really glad like hearing you like talk about it and kind of like explain your thought process. Cause like to me, like reading it, I kind of took it as like, a serial killer will take like a momentum from oh, like trophies. His, yeah. Yeah. Trophies from like each of his victims. And so like, that's kind of the way that like it's positioned to the audience, at least from like the way that you read it as a screenplay. Because when you, when you see something on the screen, when you read the, the, like the stage directions and like the, the dialogue and everything, it's, it's a completely different experience. Yeah. And so that's kind of how I took it. So it's interesting hearing you talk about it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I recently uh, locked in a director because we're in pre-production for this. And it was really interesting because the moment I sent him the script, um, I was honestly, I, I never know when someone's going to be interested, but I like this guy's work. Um, his name's Andrew Pritzker. And I sent him out uh, a, a copy of the, the screenplay. And I knew he was the guy because like the next day he sent me four pages of very detailed notes. And this is an 11 page script. So it's almost, uh, you know, half of what the script was. Um, and it was just, not just um, ideas for how he's translating this work to the screen, um, but also like ways that he's elevating things that I already have. A lot of times, if you're getting that many notes, it, you go, oh, this person wants to change the story. But instead, he wanted to, <laughs> to elevate sure. the story by having things like, oh, what if he's got a lighter that he just plays with? Because the light is what keeps the monster at bay. Uh, but then the lighter won't quite light. And so you just see sparks and that's it. Or what if a lamp falls on the floor when he gets sucked under the bed and it flickers momentarily, but then goes out. I, I, I think you might be currently the only uh, contest, the screenwriting competition winner that actually is actively developing this into a film. Um, and so I, I'm very curious to see it. I really hope that we are able to premiere it uh, soon in the coming years for for future film festivals but i want to put this on record so that we can compare to compare the final price or the final like piece resistance how do you envision yeah. the monster to look at in your head for me that was the huge thing when i talked to the director was if this can't be done in a way that makes us feel a little bit sick in the pit of our stomach then i don't want to do it like I, <laughs> If it suddenly looks campy, like, have you seen The Langoliers? I have not. It's based on a Stephen King, like, novella. And I loved reading this when I was a kid. And it was uh, terrifying in my mind. And then when they did, it was kind of a made-for-TV miniseries. Okay. And just the special effects were so bad. And it comes in these, like, monsters with these teeth that, like, I don't know, they zoom in. And it would just, like, it ruins the story when you can't be scared because it looks so bad. Uh, for me, when I wrote the screenplay, there's a reason that we only see it briefly. We see this flicker of light from a lightning strike uh, outside because it's storming. And in that brief moment, because the monster can only come out in the dark. So we don't get to see it a lot. We get to hear the sounds and imagine it. And I think that it's very difficult for us to do something that does justice to whatever is in the viewer's mind in the dark when they hear those sloppy eating sounds and this man screaming and fighting for his life. So for me, I just want to see maybe some glowing eyes underneath the bed and maybe just like a claw or a hand that's reaching around. And it almost looks human-like, but there's something twisted. So uh, then at the end, when she says, um, spoiler alert, good night, daddy. Then we're like, oh, was that the dad's hand that we're seeing? <laughs> and, you know, and then I, because at, at the end, I feel like there are a lot of questions and I don't know that I totally want to answer them. I want to leave that up to the audience. Uh, so I yeah. want to see yeah, just eyes and a hand. 
and really the look of horror on this man's face as he realizes, even though he's still breathing, he is already dead. Well, uh, I'm really excited to see the the final shorts. I, I agree. I think that less is more. Um, it's more effective if you're kind of left to like be haunted uh, than rather having to explain everything. So, but uh, Sneakerhead Mary hopefully be coming to Horrific Hope on the big screen at the Alamo Draft House in the coming years. Uh, but until then, Mr. Campbell, where can people find you online? I'll just go to jamiecampbellcomedy.com. I am touring kind of all over the country this year uh, with my, my show, Big Dad Energy. I know you guys are all about mental health. My show was uh, a reviewer once called it uh, the most, possibly the most positive stand-up act in existence. Uh, <laughs> uh, anybody that, that uh, grew up in the late 90s, early 2000s, if those were your teen years, this is the show for you. People from that era, they are erupting in the house. It's a show for all, really anybody from late teens all the way through old age, but that particular demographic, it hits hard. So I hope you'll come and see me. Uh, if you click on the performances tab there, that's where all that information is. Uh, but uh, as far as screenwriting as well, um, I, I, I try to keep that updated with current projects and uh, everything that's happening. Well, uh, be sure to check the link in the descriptions below where you guys can check out Jamie's website. Until uh, next time, Jamie, thank you so much. And Absolutely. Make thank sure you. you guys hit that hit that subscribe button. And as Jamie said, we're all about mental health here. So if you or someone you know is struggling, click the links in the descriptions below to check out our mental health resource library as well. Thank you guys. Until next time. Awesome. I'm hoping my mic